One of the other creative uses for masks is using text with them. Let's go to the picture we had open previously. Objects and animation screen and we'll apply a mask here. Once again we'll go back to the mask template, a mask that's available within pictures to exit. On this occasion I'm going to select a rectangle. I want to make it a little bit longer. Let's just guess at a thousand pixels and the width of the blur, I'm going to drop that down to about 25 but I can always come back in and change it if it doesn't look right. And I can click OK to that. Now what I'd like to do here with my mask container, which contains everything within our mask, is to move it up. So I'm going to go to my animation tab. I've got the keyframe selected on the left hand side of the screen and I just want to click and drag the Y to lift this up because I want to just drop that right close to that horizon because what I'm going to put within the mask is text. So down here in the mask content whereas before we chose the boat I'm going to right click choose add text or a hyperlink Suddenly my picture comes back fully, but I've got text sitting in the sky. With the text selected, if I go to the animation screen and I use my up and down pan, you can see what the mask will allow us to do. We can drop our text into the foreground, or we can bring it out depending on the project we're doing. And here's another tip with text as well to get a colour from within the image which often works particularly well. Just before I do that let's put something on screen which is a little more relevant perhaps because this is certainly where it was. Have I got the spelling right? I think we're about right. Let's go back to the animation tab just going to drop that down a little bit, don't want it quite that big but of course these are all going to be personal choices and I need to decide whether I'm going to have this coming up or down but just for the moment with the first keyframe selected let's go to the colour correction I'm going to go to coloration I'll choose red but it doesn't really matter what colour I choose because I'm going to adjust it by clicking the panel We've got an eyedropper here. If I click it and hold the click, if that's the right way to describe it, I can move on to the picture and I can pick a colour from the sky. So if I wanted something which is in keeping, you can see it's quite easy to achieve and it looks pretty good too. I think that's just a little bit too high maybe, so I'll just, whoops, I've got, that looks a bit funny. Oh, I've got the zoom. Look, I, I went up there to click into what I think was the pan and I've got it scrolled up and I've adjusted my zoom in error. So what I was going to say was, let's just drop that down a bit. See, if I go too far, I'm starting to encroach into the mask. But of course I can drop the mask stencil down as well if there was a need to do that. You can see the effect of that. So now all we would need to do with our text is to set up whatever animation we wanted to achieve. So if we wanted this to start hidden then we just need to select that first keyframe and drop it down out of sight. Let's have the image appear on screen so we'd probably want it to get past the fade on. We would probably want at least another second maybe so we may go to somewhere around three and then from between three and four I'll clone this doesn't have to be exact but between three and four I want it just gently lifting up into that sort of position and of course if I'm going to work that way it's going to start its movement hidden so I would be choosing a speed for this which will be slowed down if it was going the other way I'd probably use accelerate and we've only got a pan with the text so we would choose slow down. So when I 
but I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll take a look at this out here. Image fades on screen in the normal way, but then our title appears. We don't have a lot of time here, so we would have to give a bit more there. And you notice that there are times once we see what we've done, we're just clashing on the corner there. I think my South Pacific probably could do with moving just a little bit to the right. So if we put the cursor in that position and hit the up arrow to do that, just make a mental note of the 7 there. 7. I'm going to drop that down a little bit there. But this one also, oops, I moved that, Control Z. That one will also need to be 7 too. So when we run it, it all looks good and it's positioned a bit better. Back into the main screen, I suppose, if this was really the main title for a slideshow, then the blank we would have there wouldn't have text on it too. So let's simulate that and perhaps on that particular occasion we probably wouldn't have that image either. So let me select the blank and press play and what I've done is just allowed an extra half a second for the text to come up so I've increased it to one and a half seconds to move onto the screen and I allow it to fade out just a couple of seconds before we move on to the next image. Pretty quick and easy to do. So very easy to use on straight edges but I've got an image here where I've got a crack in the rock that's on an angle. Well of course once we create our mask we can rotate the mask so that it lies along that angle so that's not a problem. And if we wanted to bring text out of a bank of trees or from within clouds we can use this technique to do that too.